What about India? Do you like India at this point of time? Uh, within the emerging universe, you know, our, our big calls, we would say, is that we are um, overweight the likes of Taiwan, uh, Philippines, and indeed India. Uh, and we're underweight the likes of uh, South Africa and Brazil. Um, so within a regional context, we do like India, um, but also indeed in an absolute sense. We have a Sensex target of 22,000, um, 10, 12% upside from where we are at the moment. Um, I think three factors stand out uh, as to why we are overweight Indian equities at the moment. First of all is the fact that it's not China. Um, China is going through a torrid time in, uh, at the moment, um, whereas uh, uh, in India's case, while the uh, you know, fundamentals are far from perfect, while policy remains challenging, these are known factors. Uh, we've known about those challenges for some time, whereas developments in China have surprised on the downside more recently and have been, there's been negative surprises. Whereas in India, as I say, that negatives are well established, um, but arguably we've seen some you know, positive developments recently. The government, again, is trying to push the envelope on reform, uh, talking about the possibility of uh, single brand retail moving up to 50% foreign ownership. Uh, obviously, we've got the applications for the new banking license outstanding, but also a proposal to have open-ended uh, issuance of new licenses to suitable parties uh, going forward in the India banking system. But to be more concrete as well, the uh, gas reform, uh, gas uh, price increases that we've seen recently uh, will follow through directly to the bottom line of Reliance Industries, the biggest company in India, assuming that it can lift up production from here. The weaker rupee uh, actually is a, a net beneficiary from a corporate earnings point of view. We estimate that a uh, rupee dollar exchange rate of 57 would raise EPS uh, FY14 by about 2%. Um, so we see that uh, while challenges remain, weak rupee amongst them, um, from a corporate earnings point of view and from an uh, expectations point of view, India is doing certainly relatively better than China, but also in absolute terms, I would say, is, um, is seeing incremental improvements. From a, a liquidity point of view, Clive, uh, India was one of the biggest recipients of uh, foreign portfolio money coming in both last year as well as this year. Do you somewhere foresee that tide turning? We've already started seeing some pull out from the debt markets. How, how probable is it that uh, some money could flow back again into more developed markets out of India? Well, at the, you know, in an EM context, to deal with that first, uh, no doubt about it, we've seen dramatic outflow of funds. Um, specifically, uh, we've seen about $20 billion flow out of emerging market equity over the past uh, 12 weeks or so. Um, but at a more granular level, there's an interesting development, and that is that that, that selling of the $20 billion we're seeing is, is dominated. 90% of it is ETF-related. If we look towards passive funds, uh, they have not seen significant redemption so far. So on a year-to-date basis, uh, we've seen uh, roughly about uh, $20 billion of uh, ETF money has, has flowed out, um, but only about $10 billion on the active money. So net, we're at about roughly $10 billion net inflow on a year-to-date basis. But the, the question from here is how sticky is that passive, or sorry, is that active uh, money component? You know, will the, the net 20 billion that we have seen um, flow um, uh, into emerging market equities year to date, will that remain sticky as, been, as has been the case? Um, or will we start to see some of that um, money flow out? I think at the margins, the risk is clearly that we see some of that active money uh, redemptions come through and we see some money to, to flow out. So to bring it down from an emerging market, data point to India specific data point um, there's no doubt that India is one of the markets that's more reliant on portfolio flows both active money as well as passive as, as, as and, or passive or ETF flows and there's certainly a risk we would say um, that in an environment where we start to see redemptions for active money and um, that India the equity market could be um, uh, uh, exposed to, to some downside risks um, uh, from here <laughs> Thank you.